The Poetry Africa Festival is presented by the Center for Creative Arts at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. Now, in its 26th year, the Poetry Africa Festival retains its position as South Africa and Africa's largest gathering of poets. Rooted in the struggle for social justice, the Poetry Africa Festival continues to give a platform to poets from South Africa, Africa and abroad whose voices are at the heart of building more transformed, just and equitable societies. Good day and welcome. I am Sipi Nileshongwa, curator for the Poetry Africa Festival. For the past two years, the Poetry Africa Festival was presented mainly online due to the national lockdowns to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. The 26th edition of Poetry Africa Festival is not entirely free from the threat of COVID-19, but remains inspired by the voices of our poets. They are voices I have seen that cautiously bring us back into the light and the new dawn. The 26th anniversary of Poetry Africa Festival also provides us with the vital opportunity of rebuilding our communities and province that was wrecked not only by the devastating floods, but also by the political insurgency. The Poetry Africa Festival grants us the opportunity to reflect and celebrate the festival's legacy, but it also allows us to critically reflect on our society and movement for social change. Poetry gives us the agency to let our words breathe, move, and transform. It allows us to reflect on the past, live in the present, and gives us hope for change, change we want to see in us and in our society, where we no longer feel less than or othered, but just. This year's edition of Poetry Africa Festival continues to salute and honor all the poets who have walked this road with us, who over the last 26 years have given us the words to express feelings, to share experiences, to address issues of poverty, social injustice, struggles, and survival. This year's festival recognizes the power of the poets to use their words to breathe, move, and transform. We hope that you will be transformed and moved too. Thank you. COVID-19 afforded the Center for Creative Arts an opportunity to rethink the way in which it presents the Poetry Africa Festival program. That's why this year we have experimented with two things. One, hosting the festival as a hybrid event with a full concurrently running online program. And two, formalizing our partnership with University of Johannesburg Arts and Culture to present Poetry Africa on tour. The tour kicked off in Joburg on the 6th of October and the three day long affair involved staging a series of events at the UJ Arts and Culture Center. In 2020, the world went into lockdown. People were confined to their homes. Festivals such as Poetry Africa would have been a ghost town. Today, South Africa is connected to the world with easy access to the internet, computers, and smartphones. That way, Poetry Africa was not a ghost town because it went to the online space. The show went on, and these events were broadcasted live on Poetry Africa's Facebook page and the Center for Creative Arts YouTube channel. This year, we plan to go hybrid. There will be shows at live venues as well as online events that will be broadcasted. These can be watched on the Poetry Africa Facebook page and the Center for Creative Arts YouTube channel. You can access these even after the live stream has ended. Uja Arts and Culture is a division of the Faculty of Art, Design and Architecture at the University of Johannesburg. The division produces professional and student programs across a broad range of art disciplines. Among these are the Futures and Beyond Creativity and 4IR Conference, the UJ Playwriting Laboratory, an Artists in Residence program aimed at stimulating practice-led research, a range of concerts and productions and the UJA Arts Academy that offers students from across the institution opportunities to participate in or experience the arts. 
Our partnership with the Center for Creative Arts is extremely valuable to us in that it extends our reach, maximizes our output, and enables us to offer more opportunities to students than what would otherwise have been possible. Since 2021, we have worked together on several projects, including the Jazz Appreciation Month celebrations, the UJ Weekend of Jazz, the International Poetry Day celebration during the time of the Writer Festival and Poetry at the Marketplace as part of the Artfluence Festival, to mention a few. Now we are partnering on Poetry Africa, with the Johannesburg leg taking place at the Uja Arts Center from 6 to 8 October, and a group of our students will make their way to Durban to participate in activities there. We look forward to our continued partnership and we wish the Centre for Creative Arts all the best with the Poetry Africa Festival. The Johannesburg leg of the 26th Poetry Africa Festival is brought to you by the Centre for Creative Arts, the University of KwaZulu-Natal and the University of Johannesburg's Arts and Culture Department. This year, the festival increased its geographical scope in response to a persistent request from the Joburg poetry scene to bring Poetry Africa to Jersey. Well, Lebo Mashile, Tabiso Vili, Vangile Gancho, Sipokazi Jonas, the Slam Jam Top 10 semi finalists are but some that participated and competed in the City of Gold as part of our Johannesburg presentations. In a twist of poetic justice, the Kyurapetsi Hositile Theatre played host to two of our presentations What's a Woman's Worth and the Slam Jam semi final. Joba, you got what you wanted, right? <laughs> now, during lockdown, for many of us, technologically mediated experiences became the only kind that we had. And although we are back live on stage, we are not ghosting our online community. The Center for Creative Arts continues its inroads in increasing its digital footprint by presenting a range of online activations as part of the festival program. Our online community can indulge in the keynote address by Diana Ferris, numerous themed online readings, panel discussions, book launches, lectures, and workshops all of which will be streamed on the CCA's Facebook page and YouTube channel. So there's something for everyone. We hope that you will enjoy experiencing the compelling work of this year's participating poets as it breathes, transforms and moves you towards a better self. We will now hear from Prof. Nobuhle Shlongwa, University of KwaZulu-Natal's Dean and Head of School of the Arts, about the Durban leg of the festival. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 26th Poetry Africa Festival. This year, the festival will have live performances in Durban and Johannesburg, as well as a series of offline events to continue to reach out to our extensive online audiences that is national and international, built over the last two years as we have been offering our festivals online. I would like to thank our curators for the festival this year who have done excellent work. That is Sipindile Shongwa, Kwa's Roots and Karen Ijumba. I do also want to acknowledge our festival sponsors who have been working with us for the number of years. The Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, KwaZulu Natal Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, French Institute of South Africa and Total South Africa. The festival is a success due to the following partners, the University of Johannesburg, the University of Vedvatosrand, Guta Institute, Representations of Flanders, Walloni Braxels, Italian Institute of Culture, Tetro Polti that is in Italy, Hear My Voice, which is an NGO, South African History Online, and the Mazisi Gunene Foundation. The festival theme this year is entitled Poetic injustice, words that breathe, move and transform. I want to acknowledge all our poets taking part in this year's program. This year, there are key highlights you shouldn't miss. The festival will present both the Mafiga Kuala Memorial Lecture and the Mazisi Gunene Memorial Lecture. The festival will launch its third poetry anthology, um, this anthology is published in multiple South African languages and aims to position African languages in the main alongside the dominant English language that is in line with the, with the university language policy. As an output 
from the NIHSS grant received last year, the Center for Creative Art will launch a digital archive of the last 25 years of the Poetry Africa. The archive is intended to serve as a resource for scholars and enthusiasts of spoken word poetry. The Poetry Africa, first of all, will have satellite events uh, at five community centers and townships across the broader Eteguini as well as Umgeni municipality. Participants for the festivals are drawn from all five regions of the African continent, the Southern Africa, the Central Africa, West Africa, East Africa, North Africa, as well as Latin America, USA, Europe, and Asia. The Center for Creative Arts Festivals have been a training ground for young graduates. I also acknowledge the interns working in the festival of this year. These are Amanda Zuma, Pili Njigija, Besh Siddiq. We are so proud of them. I wish um, to thank our DVC and Head of the Humanities College, Professor Ntlantlam Kize, for financially supporting the festival and the Center for Creative Arts in general. I want to congratulate um, the director uh, of the Center for Creative Art, Dr. Ismail Mohammed, for increasing uh, the number of funders and also the partners uh, for this festival. Working uh, very close with Ms. Spindile Shongwa, the curator of the festival, the co-curators, um, Kwas Ruth and Karen Ichumba. To all the staff at the CCA, Mr. Sakile Gumede, Ms. Nogazim Kize, and all the interns who are working hard to make this festival a success. Thank you very much. Enjoy the festival. Art is culture. And the celebration of culture is Africa's distinctive pride and joy. That is why the International Poetry Africa Festival always tries to make sure that poetry is an art form that is accessible to everyone, either virtually or physically. And one of the programs that the festival has is the outreach program, where the festival takes its participating poets to community centers to conduct workshops and performances. This program is vital for the festival because not only does it bridge the gap between poets and their fans residing in these communities, but it also gives an opportunity to the public that is unable to come to the main evening event to sort of experience the festival within their community centers. And they also get enlightened about poetry writing in the workshops provided. Throughout the years, the International Poetry Africa Festival has partnered with several centers who have helped immensely with hosting these workshops and performances. Amongst those centers, this year we have five centers that we'll also be visiting, namely Wushinipen African Center in Inanda, Ubuntu Nest in Hawik, KCAP Ekaya Multi Art Center in Guamashu, Lutuli Museum in Guadalupe, and last but not least, the Dennis Haley Center in the CBD. And that is where we will be having a special event for homeless people. It does not end there. The festival truly understands the Zulu idiom that says, Inkunzi isematolini, which means the future of tomorrow comes from the youth of today. So it's no surprise that the festival prioritizes the inclusion of the coordination of the school's visiting program that grants learners a lifetime opportunity to interact with the festival's esteemed poets. Through these interactions, learners get to learn the nuances of creative writing and poetry writing, and they also learn performance skills. And these visits also stimulate their interest in poetry and promote creative writing skills in students. The schools that we will be visiting this year include Kenan College, Inanda Seminary School, Umtapo High School, and Inget the Senior Primary School, to name a few. We hope to see you in all these places. Thank you. A distinguishing feature of the 26th Poetry Africa Festival is the infusion of other art forms into its program. The Center for Creative Arts, in collaboration with Teatro Potlatch, 
will present a theatrical and visually exhilarating staging of Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea at the Seabrooks Theatre. Furthermore, the Italian Cultural Institute, in collaboration with Joburg Ballet, will also stage a single dance performance of Dante Alighieri's epic poem, Inferno. Lastly, our very own Momo will be sprinkling all our live events with her sculpting skills. This year, we are bringing visual arts into Poetry Africa. At all our live events, we will have an interactive tree installation where individuals will be invited to share their favorite poems. For those of you who will be attending our live performances, please look out for the wooden sculpture made from plywood. Today, we are gathered to kick off the week-long program for the Poetry Africa Festival. However, the Centre for Creative Arts, as a critical node in the ecosystem of poetry making and presentation in South Africa, has hosted various events and undertaken activities outside of the live and online program that you will engage with this week to make the festival a year-long event. We will now hear from Dr. Ishmael Mohammed, Director of the Centre for Creative Arts, about how Poetry Africa has expanded the scope of its interactions and visibility throughout the year. The Poetry Africa Festival, which has for the last 25 years been a five-day event once a year, has evolved to becoming a year-round program. Through various partnerships at Miroka with other poetry organisations, both nationally and internationally, we create opportunities for our poets to engage each other, to explore new, new ways of collaborating and creating work. Our focus is to create an environment in which poets are able to find year-round employment opportunities and engagement opportunities with their counterparts. We also work very closely with the academic environment within the university to document and archive our work. During this year's Poetry Africa Festival, we'll be launching a poetry archive that has been meticulously curated by Karen Ijumba. But we also will be looking at a year-round programme that we ran through the Right to Speak project, which was coordinated by Kakasa uh, Muhari. Uh, so from my side, all I wish to say is that the kind of changes that we've brought about during the past year, uh, particularly under the difficult circumstances of COVID-19, have planted the seeds for us to rethink where Poetry Africa needs to be going into the new decade. Thank you. Good day. My name is Kaka Zamohare and I've had the absolute pleasure of being the project coordinator for Right to Speak. This international collaborative project sees organizations representing South Africa, Germany, Belgium and France coming together to really celebrate poetry's unique and powerful ability to give voice to various issues of human rights that affect us no matter where we are in the world. The project really has various objectives, some of which being sharpening the uh, skills and abilities of our local sector, creating um, room and opportunity for us to build relationships between poets on the African continent and those on the European continent. And we also find ways to um, create opportunities for us to meet and talk and share um, as, as, as poetry lovers and word lovers. So there have been a series of events that have um, rolled out since March when we launched the project. There have been performance events, there have been discussions. We had an amazing Poetry Lohotla, which brought together poetry stakeholders to discuss various issues that impact us as a sector. We have also wrapped up a phenomenally informative workshop series that went beyond writing and performance to the business of art. And that was really um, as part of the upskilling um, and sharpening of the skills for the sector. We have seen an amazing uh, residency where South African and Belgian artists uh, spent some time together and then collaborated. 
We also have the amazing Right to Speak catalog that features 20 young voices that the project partners have put out there to say the world needs to meet these young people and hear their work. We're also really excited to be launching an anthology featuring works from those 20 writers. And it really has just been phenomenal to see how organizations like these can come together um, and can use poetry as a very powerful tool to spark conversation and to build relationships between the continent. It has been an exciting couple of months and we really can't wait to see what the future holds for the Writer to Speak project. Over the last 25 years, the Center for Creative Arts has amassed an incredible repository of recordings from its various festivals. In 2021, the National Institute for the Humanities and Social Sciences gifted us with a generous grant to digitize this repository. This opened up a space for us to begin experimenting with what digitization could mean for these collections. Our first project involved digitizing select performances to support a broader creative production. This multimedia production fused photography, animated illustrations, original call and response music, as well as the selected recordings to create a film that spoke to the positionality of poetry within the social justice ecology. This year, we were able to work with the catalogs and mapping technology to identify trends and gaps in the festival's programming. As a result, we're able to better support the strategic planning for the Poetry Africa Festival. Our experiments with the Poetry Africa repository have created a space for us to explore what selective rather than mass digitization could mean for arts organizations. At the 26th Poetry Africa Festival, we will be presenting our second iteration of our digitization efforts. This is in the form of an interactive digital platform that shows us where our poets and funders have come from in the past and who we could possibly engage with in the future. The Poetry Africa Festival is a festival of the African continent. Along with some of the leading South African poets, the 26th edition of the Poetry Africa Festival is proud to feature an array of poets from the African continent. Please welcome the following poets to our virtual stage. Q Malewezi from Malawi, Julie Ngadi from South Africa, Daga Tola from Nigeria, Ada Lulonga from the Democratic Republic of Congo, and K. Altenai from Sudan. They will take us on a journey across the continent to bear witness to the injustices that affect our various regions. Hello, Poetry Africa. This is Q Malewezi from Malawi, and it's an honor to once again be on the Poetry Africa platform. I will perform a, t a poem titled People. Hope you enjoy it. People see people. People meet people. People greet people. People like people. People know people. People trust people. People love people. People make people happy. People give people. People hope people give people. People beg people. People ignore people. People forget people. People tell people about people. People believe people. People betray people. People hurt people. Hurt people. Hurt people. People forgive people. People surprise people always. People pop people's pimples. People surprise people. People choose people. People use people. People lose people. People like people people like. People want people people have. People have people people want. People have people people have. People give people what people have. People infect people. People blame people. People judge people. People divide people. People fight people. People slay people. People maim people. People burn people. People bomb people. 
People keep people from people. People sell people to people. People buy people for people. People kill people. People watch people kill people. People scrape people from people like people are not people. People save people. People protect people from people who think other people are a lesser people. People guide people. People serve people. People hope, people think, people know that people are people. People inspire people to be better at being people. One day, people will show people how to be people. Just by being people, by just being people, by being just people. Teaching people lessons that unite people into a people. On that day, people will truly see people and say, we are more than just people. We are a just people. Thank you, Poetry Africa people, for having me. Fetching the, fragments, fetching the fragments, fetching the fragments of a contested concept, womanhood, is at best a fool's errand. Nonetheless, I sojourn here with my bounty, as though unaware that whatever jagged figurine I assemble will be quickly turned weapon, as is customary in the tradition of reading the words that gesture towards this fraught idea. I have known myself as little more than a tenant in what I at first thought was flesh, but have since understood to be a shape shifting from meat to medium to skin slash sight of meticulous politic to theatre and audience of the extraordinary imaginings of many men's minds. With outside eyes as both prosecutor and executioner, lasting from the moment of opening arguments for the gratifying sound of the cascading guillotine. The desire to be seen has become a gruesome chore assigned to me by history. And so, leave me alone. Look away. Call me not a woman. Call me never at all. Untether me from the consequence of your definitions that neither fit nor assist me as I scramble to survive as a statistic of romance and duty and conditional definitions hinged in wet creases you should not feel so free to be swinging your ideals from. Call me not a woman. Your certainty is wasted on me and that definition is illegible to this tenant's eye. The Horde's Prayer our, Our mothers with souls are tethered, 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 hallowed by shame. shame. Your children shun, shun, their minds are in skin and skin is damp and then tied and then feathered. Feed us this blame, our only our bread, 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 and, bread, and retrieve us from this flesh captured. captured. As and we plead to those who transcend this pathway, to leave us not in stagnation, stagnation, but to deliver us upheaval. For kind is the chaos, and countless, and countless are, our are our stories of forevers, turned to nevers, not, not, not again, not again, not again. They teach we of the philosophy of fallacy, but they do not teach us the philosophy and history of the resistance of suffering people. They teach we of the doctrine of turn the other cheek by Jesus Christ, but they do not teach us Malcolm Hex, liberation by any means necessary. They teach us of the modernized versions of the doctrine of peace by Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, but they do not teach us Bob Mali and the Whalers. Get up, stand up, stand up for your right. They do not teach us Peter touch. There will be no peace till sufferers get their equal rights and justice. They do not teach us Anikulako Kuti Fela and Nogogiri. Make my brother hungry. Make a no touch. La 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 la. 
Rather, they teach us of the death of God on the cross and the redeeming grace to lift suffering people from pains and suffering into the bliss of redemption in heaven. Hallelujah! Given the loss of our mother tongue, we no longer can bring meaning into the world. Hallelujah! Yes, suffering people, we can beat and smash sufferings from our lives. Suffering people... Suffering people. They teach me about it. They mean that the Bukasa, Sajendo, Mobutu, Abacha, Kampore. They do not teach us about Lumumba, Steve Biko, Sankara, how they were murdered for trying to fashion a path to lead people out of suffering. They do not teach me how this capital system is making people sad making government after government bad. They do not teach suffering people the philosophy and history of the resistance of suffering people. And yet the slavery days are not yet over. Computers don't make money. The sweat and blood of poor sufferers inside them factory modern day slavery plantations make money. They do not teach we about revolutions, the making of the October revolution. They do not teach we Lenny, Trotsky, and the Bolsheviks leading suffering people to storm heaven. Suffering people, suffering people. Bonjour, Poetry Africa. Je m'appelle Ada Nunga Alizé. Je vous salue depuis Goma Slam Session dans la ville de Goma, précisément en RDC. Le titre de mon poème, c'est Nous Oviens. Silence. Ici, on parle, on interpelle. On dénonce nos rêves prématurément avortés. Nos droits violés par une soif de pouvoir en excès. Une expression dite libre, mais qu'on a censurée. Des massacres de nos frères qu'on a dénoncés, mais qu'ils ont peur pétrée. Je parle de moi, dans ce moi. D'où je viens, les talents, les capacités ne sont plus d'actualité. Faudrait avoir un homme classé sur un bureau pour se faire embaucher. Nos villes sont bordées des enfants de la rue parce que certains jouent à pile face avec les trésors nationaux. Et la vie perd petit à petit son sens parce que notre espérance de vie est handicapée par des inégalités sociales. Des vies arrachées, un peuple victime des conflits armés, des guerres tribales, non, des, gré- des guerres pour des intérêts économiques, des signatures en coulisses mais des répercussions à coups des balles et on s'emballe, des coupes en coupes jusqu'à l'avoir un 23 mars. D'où je viens, les violences sexuelles résonnent comme un écho mais restent indéfiniment impunis. Les criminels, les coupables et bords de nos villes, ici c'est les billets verts qui conjuguent les derniers verbes et l'impunité est l'ombre qui refarte les verbes amis. Nul n'est au-dessus de la loi, ne reste qu'un slogan à la con parce que le pouvoir l'a piétiné. Chez nous, l'activisme est un crime parce qu'il préfère nous voir mourir la bouche bandée. Et puis, c'est quoi la paix quand ce sont les nôtres qui la guerre en porte C'est quoi la justice quand ce sont des innocents qui croupissent derrière la porte Si l'injustice tuait mon pays serait une fausse commune. Qui dire des inconscients, des incompétents dans des bureaux climatisés avec des milliers de dollars et des militaires au front et leurs dépendants qui encaissent les coûts des salaires dérisoires. Une jeunesse au chômage. Une vie assez incompétente qui ne veut pas quitter le pouvoir, un pays en décombre avec un béton à la présidence. Et puis comment dire justice quand des enseignants debout tous les mois ne savent plus comment joindre le debout de moi Car des infirmiers éveillés toutes les nuits doivent se suffire, des miettes qui prévoient l'État après multiples grèves salariales réprimées par une police affamée. Des députés surpayés pour rien, non, au prix de l'inconscience et du silence. Et dans une scène d'Ali Baba et les scènes s'envoler, la voix des cassés, quoi, et ses sangs, pollue l'atmosphère politique. Good morning, my name is Dot Eltene, and I'm going to be reading from my debut collection, The Moral Judgment of Butterflies. It's a great honor to be part of the Poetry Africa Festival. The three poems that I'm going to be reading um, deal with social justice, um, primarily the coup that occurred in 2019 in my country, in Sudan. And uh, the first poem that I will be reading is called Tomorrow. I watched them returning to Allah, headlines of hope and despair. I burn toast, burn rice, burn my hands. I cannot look away because I am away. Some nights I press unlock in some dreamed up parking lot and different cars are waiting to take me. But I've buried street names and exits all the shortcuts I knew in a wallet I quit using 10 years ago. I have forgotten the weight of carrying four names all this time here, lost. I've been surviving with two.
Freedom. This poem is open as an open fire, as in one hundred and eighteen lives lost, peacefully protesting on June third, two thousand and nineteen, and the world hardly blinked. How do I say sorry in your language? Sorry, not like for your loss, but that we walk the same earth, even breathe the same air. Sorry that our bodies are dragged to rivers today, and remain uncounted tomorrow. My heart goes out to the cafe, or a bar, or some mall downtown. How far outside yourself have you ever really gone for a stranger? How do I say internet blackout in a way that makes you visualize people disappearing? Now, like during your lunch break, lives changing from is to was, faster than you do before you hit the gym. Where does your peace live, brother? Can mine visit soon? Can't we all want the same things, even if we look different? The last poem I will read、um, was inspired by the murder of George Floyd, and it's called "When You Find Yourself, When They Find Your Body." What they call you is dirty, dangerous, deadly, disposable, deranged. Did you come from the jungle? They ask about your lips, your hair. If people read your books down there. Did your parents fall in love first, or were they paired to breed? More mouths to feed, brown bodies surrendering. Soil thick with us, them, us, them, us. Stacks. Were we created to serve? To know our place is nowhere. What you call yourself in that language, brother? Are you other? You're not just a dead blank stare. Don't ever hate your skin, your hair. Please know you come from everywhere. Please forget that body. You're on the road now. No one is waiting. What's left of you is a bus. Every wheel is a person you wouldn't leave behind. Everyone on board is blindfolded and crying for their mother. Every mother is a bus stop. You swerve past to get home. You call those mothers trees. You call the passengers crying wind. When police ask if your ID is valid, they mean you deserve to die. They start shooting all the passengers you carry. The police aren't safe until they torch it. They step back and watch everything you love. Shrinking, covered in glass and blood, we always migrate to a place where everyone is alive inside, resisting. Thank you. The Center for Creative Arts has made it a mission to identify and promote intergenerational role models who can inspire the emergence and development. Of a new cohort of poets. To this end, Poetry Africa has introduced the concept of a legendary featured poet and a new generation's featured poet. These poets have been activated together on various occasions to nurture this kind of dialogue and capacity building amongst poets. Internationally renowned South African poet, writer, and activist for marginalized groups, Diana Ferris. Was born on 29 August 1953 in Vorchester, Cape Province, now Western Cape, as the third of six children. The daughter of Anne and Jacobus Ferris, she is of mixed heritage, including Irish and Khoisan. In 
Diana Ferris completed her BA degree with industrial psychology and sociology as her majors before studying for her honors in women's and gender studies in 1997, completing it in 1999. She then pursued her master's. Her thesis topic was Black Afrikaans Women Writers, The Joy and Frustration of the Writing Process. Diana Ferris began writing poetry at the age of 14. Her poems focus on personal, political, social, and historical themes. Her poem, I've Come to Take You Home, is a tribute to Sarah Batman, the Khoi woman who was taken from her country of birth, South Africa, under false pretenses to be displayed as a freak show attraction in 19th century Europe. Ferris wrote the poem while studying at Utrecht University in Holland in 1998. Feeling incredibly homesick, she started thinking about how Batman must have felt being in a foreign land, far away from her home, and this prompted her to start writing. The poem became a catalyst for the return of Batman's remains to South Africa, persuading the French government to finally transport her remains back to her home country after 192 years. It was so impactful that it was included in the bill that allowed for Batman's remains to be repatriated and was thus published in the French law, a first in French history that made it possible for her remains to be returned. Ferris, along with a delegation from South Africa, left to collect Batman's remains and in early 2002, Batman arrived in Johannesburg, Gauteng, and was at last laid to rest on 9 August 2002. Ferris's other work include an anthology called Convergences, which she co-wrote with Sipo Matati and Wendy Woodward. Kijk, Dis My Pa, also published in 2005, is a collection of short stories on fathers and daughters a project by white and black women. An Afrikaans collection of poetry, Onskom Fandan, published in 2006, and an English collection, I've Come to Take You Home. Included in this collection are Dark Red Flowers, a poem dedicated to her mother, who died in 1997, The African Drum, as well as For Sarah Tate, a poem dedicated to her Irish great-grandmother who came to South Africa as an indentured servant. Ferris joined a women's writers group called Weave, Women's Education and Artistic Voice Expression. The group published a collection of works in 2002 and in it, Ferris's short story, Sarah Will Come Home, A Story of Restoration, and the poem, I've come to take you home, were included. Ferris is also a founder member of Bush Poets, an all-woman poet group from the University of the Western Cape. Bush was the derogatory name given to the university in the early 1960s. The Afrikaans Writers Association, Afrikaans Schrijvers Verenigen, as well as the Women Writers Association, Women in X Chains. Ferris has read at various public occasions, rallies, and community celebrations all over the world. In 2007, she received the Minister's Award for Women from the Western Cape Provincial Department of Arts and Culture in honor of her contribution to the empowerment of women. In April 2012, the Diana Ferris Writing Project was launched by the Metro East Unit of the Western Cape Education Department. The Center for Creative Arts at the University of KwaZulu-Natal is proud to bestow on Diana Ferris the award of a legendary poet of the Poetry Africa Festival. Make the political poetic. Make the poetic political. Poetic justice is a literary device 
in which virtue is rewarded and viciousness is punished. In modern literature, it is often accompanied by an iconic twist of fate related to the character's own action. Ingrid Jonker, the daughter of an Afrikaner politician, died by suicide in 1965, five years after the Sharpeville massacre. She's well known inter alia for a prophetic poem she wrote, Die kind is nie dood nie. The child is not dead. The Sharpeville protests centered around the carrying of past books. Jonker's poem has the carrying of past books as central point. She declares in the last line, the child who became a man travels through this world without a pass. Thus it became an iconic twist of fate when in the first sitting of the new democratic government, the president, Nelson Mandela, read the poem by Ingrid Jonker, Die Kind is nie dood nie. Here we have a former passbook carrier, elected as the president of a democratic South Africa, reading a prophetic poem crafted by the daughter of a staunch Afrikaner politician who believed in and who was party to the institution of the Pass Laws Act of 1952. This law required black South Africans over the age of 16 to carry a passbook known as a Dom Pass everywhere and at all times. The Pass Laws were used to restrict the movement of black South Africans. And indeed, poetic justice occurred when one is reminded by what Jonker says at the end of the poem. Die kind, wat a man geword het, loop die die wereld sonder pas. The child who became a man walks throughout the world without a pass. And that is exactly what Nelson Mandela became. The child who became a man, the child whose people were subjected to the carrying of the past laws, whose movements were restricted, became the president of a free country and who traveled the whole world. Similarly, my poem, dedicated to the indigenous Khoi young women who were taken from a country under false pretenses returned to her motherland after 192 years. She left as a slave in 1810 and died in 1815 in Paris. Upon her death, a plaster cast was made of her body. The body then dissected, her brain, genitalia were put into glass jars. Her remains put on display in the Musée de l'Homme from 1816. Her humiliation did not end there. The zoologist Georges Cuvier wrote, the most repulsive thing about our bushwoman was a physiognomy. Our bushman offers very remarkable and singular differences. She has an even more protruding muzzle than the Negro, a face wider than the Kalmuk, and the nose bones are flatter than in either case in the last respect. Above all, I have never seen a human head more similar to the monkeys than hers. This was George Cuvier's observations, and this he said at the many seminars that he held in 1817. 
Cuvier regarded Sarah as a savage, repulsive, and Cuvier's words followed Sarah and her people. It followed us through the novels that has been written, films that have been made, scientific studies that has been made, and in the discourses that have been formed. But in poetic justice, the French had to eat their words when a senator, Nicolas Abou, came across my poem, I've Come to Take You Home. After reading the poem, he wrote to me to say that he understands how we feel about her remains still being in Paris. He wanted to have it sent home and that the poem will strengthen his argument. Now, the poem speaks of bringing Sarah home to her own land, which was beautiful, the way she remembered it and longed for it. She will be wrenched away from the monster who lives in the dark and who likens her to Satan and himself to God. The poem makes her desirable and beautiful. Run my lips over the lines in your neck, feast my eyes on the beauty of you. So everything that Cuvier wrote and said about her, all his research and studies, is made undone by the poem. And during the handing over process, one French minister said, we must ask ourselves who the real monster in the story is. Yes, they refer to her as a monster. So on that day of the handing over of Sarah Bartman's remains, the French admitted that they were wrong by what they did to her and said about her. They had to retract it all. Their great scientist's work could have been declared null and void. Poetic justice, indeed. The poetic is political, and the political is poetic. And now we welcome our new generation's featured poet, winner of the 2021 Slam Jam competition and the first ever World Poetry Slam Champion, Kabi Sovili. Hey everybody, I am Kabi Sovili, your current Slam Jam champ and champion of the World Poetry Slam. And I'm so, so grateful <laughs> to be here with you and also to be crowned as the feature poet, New Generations of Poetry Africa. Honestly, this is something that I've honestly dreamt of <laughs> for years that I never thought would happen. And for me, this year has been a year of watching dreams come to life. And so this is something that I want to offer to every one of you guys. The idea that your dreams can come alive, that you can breathe life into them. What it's meant for me to be representing South Africa, to be a winner, to be sharing poetry on these wild, wild stages has really meant that everything that I've dreamt about, thought about, put into action has come true. <laughs> Today, on this particular day, I'm coming to you from Lagos right after leaving Brussels and Amsterdam, right after winning a world championship. And as poets, it's very easy to fall into the idea that what is poetry? 
you know what does it even mean like why do we even do it go do a proper job go become an accountant or a real estate agent or something and i think this is the idea that i want us to hold on to this year i think we need to hold on to the dream we need to hold on to the story because that's where our humanity comes from. That's where our futures are made. Before anything is made, before anything is built, before a uh, road can be made or a pothole can be filled or a building can be erected into the sky, the first thing that needs to be done is that it needs to be imagined. And that is such important work because if nobody does the imagining then the world doesn't change so yeah i suppose what i'm saying is keep dreaming keep imagining and 12 year old abiso never imagined that when he wrote his first poem he would win a slam he would get published he would create an album he would create extended reality work i don't think that any of us actually truly imagine what our art can do up and still up until we start doing it and it does the necessary work and we won't know that necessary work up until we start dreaming of it so Thank you, Poetry Africa. Thank you, CCA. Thank you to every single one of you that have supported me through this wild, wild imagining. I'm so excited to bring this world to life because we imagine it together, right? Ah. <laughs> ah. As always, holy shit. I love you. At the Center for Creative Arts, we remain grateful to our partners and funders. They value the power of poetry and they support us with passion and with vision. The Embassy of France and the French Institute of South Africa have walked on many journeys with us over the past few years. This year, the Poetry Africa Festival is once again proudly supported by the Embassy of France and the French Institute of South Africa. We remain indebted to them for giving voice to our poets and for their assistance in bringing on board Total Energies as a sponsor of the festival for the second consecutive year. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear poetry lovers, bonjour. On behalf of the French Institute of South Africa, it gives me a profound pleasure to open the 26th edition of the Poetry Africa International Festival. Ever since I came here one year ago, I have been struck by this enthusiasm for words, on the writing, for speech and song, and for the new forms of slam poetry performances. We at the French Institute fully understand this love and share it too, why are words and poetry so important to us? Perhaps it is because they do not just, just tell us stories, they open conversation, a dialogue between the poet and the readers, the slam artist and the audience, but also a dialogue between the past and the present, between the imaginary and the real. They build bridges between generations and of course poets open conversation between people, communities and between countries. This is why the theme of this festival edition, Poetic Injustice, Voices that Breathe, Move and Transform, seems so important for me. It honors poets who open up difficulty conversation and use their voice to fight for equality. We at the French Embassy and the French Institute are very proud to support this year's slam poetry competition. Slam is a textual art through not only textual, it is art in motion. 
but SLAM is more than that. It gives a safe platform for marginal communities, for young people, and especially women, to voice their opinions. Slammers and the growing community of slammers, female slam poets, are part on an em of an emerging social movement that is particularly active in Francophonia, Africa. For these women, slam has meant a change in their lives and as they have found new words to describe difficult experiences. This is also why the French Institute is very happy to have contributed to the participation of Lido, last Lamers from Cameroon in this festival. I would like to thank the Centre for Curative Arts at the University of KwaZulu-Natal for organizing every year this incredible festival for so long, and especially Peter Jacob, UG Head of Arts and Culture Centers, Dr. Ismail Mahomed, Director of the Centre for Creative Arts, and Mrs. Simfindile Wongwa and Kwas Roots, co-curators of the Poetry Africa Festival this year. Finally, I would like to warmly thank our generous partner, Total Energies. Its grants allow Poetry Africa to present the annual Slam Poetry Festival. The French Embassy, the French Institute of South Africa, and Total Energy together aim to encourage education through the arts and to bring the beauty and power of poetry to new audiences to discover. Enjoy the festival, it will be amazing. Merci beaucoup. There is nothing to see. In fact, we should never look back but forward because life is in front while looking forward to express. Keep in mind, you have to be strong. I'm not life literate, but I know there's scarcely there to remind us where we are coming from. But they shouldn't tell us where we have to go, you know. It's not the past, but the future we have to follow. Yesterday, today was tomorrow. We can't change the past, but if you like, you can be my hero. So I'm ready. Ready to move to a different area. Ready to turn the page and start a new career. Because five years after all my sufferings, I told myself not to cry for the simple reason that I'll soon be the mother of a child. I saw all the sacrifices my mother did for me, so I'd like to do the same for you. You, I promise to do my best to preserve you from all the errors in you. In you. Life is given. There's not only hell on earth, but also even and even when things will change. Never mind how you will learn how to face up evils. And when sometimes some hills will seem too high, never be afraid, I will help you to climb. You're not yet there, but because of you today I can smile. You're the one that brought me from darkness to light. Peter. The Poetry Africa Festival has for many years been generously supported by the KwaZulu-Natal Department of Sports, Arts and Culture. The department has also supported the Centre for Creative Arts to present the Time of the Writer Festival, Durban International Film Festival and the Jomba Festival. The Centre for Creative Arts values the support of the KZN Department of Sports, Arts and Culture, who have given Poetry Africa the wings to become one of Africa's most important cultural events. For the first time after several years, the Poetry Africa Festival is also supported by the National Department of Sports, Arts and Culture. The Centre for Creative Arts looks forward to a continued relationship with the department to grow opportunities for spoken word poetry in South Africa. With that, we would like to declare the 26th edition of Poetry Africa Festival officially open. Thank you for joining us online. A special thank you to Mr. Ndabolanga for the use of the chairman in recording some of our messages. We now hand over to Amanda Zuma, the CCA intern who played a major role in the administration and coordination of the festival. 
to close this event with some fun facts and highlights from this year's program. We hope you enjoy. What is a woman's worth? The 26th edition of Poetry Africa program is strongly made of black African female poets, from the performers to the judges. And once again, we have an all women, for women live performance. Did you know there is a day scheduled for Durban based poets? So, family and friends, you don't want to miss that one. Something to look forward to? There are poets that will be appearing in Poetry Africa for the first time. Now that's something to look forward to. Here is something exciting. We have the hottest lineup of artists who are not just poets. They are also prominent in other fields. Some are even published authors. Like Ulebu Mashile who will be appearing in Poetry Africa for the ninth time. Did you know? The 26th Poetry Africa's keynote speaker, Diana Ferris, wrote a poem so powerful that it convinced the French Senate to all vote for the return of the remains of Sarah Batman to South Africa. 